Thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation was going on even during the break and I had to call for backup. Now Pastor Chris Atemo joining us here, CJ, popularly known as CJ Atemo. Thank you for making time as well. And so we were talking about the issue, the latest, Candy says the latest trend she's seen is that people, the men are abdicating their duties to the ladies. And now that also poses a challenge when it comes to roles and masculinity as well. What is your response to that? Well, of course, a lot has changed from what traditionally um, would have been what the men would do. Part of it being the provision. Yeah. And um, the ladies nowadays are going out of there, they're making their money. But as a man, I do more than just provide uh, physical needs. I provide leadership as well. I provide security. Um, I provide a sense of vision and guidance. And that doesn't stop even when the lady is earning more than the man. There are certain uh, roles that a man can play that would still empower his woman um, to even go out and make the money. There should never be competition in a relationship. Uh, we, we become a team, and in a team, you know, you've got to support each other. Yeah. If I were to use the analogy of like football, for example, when you have the ball, you all push forward. You lose the ball, you all come back. So as much as there are certain things that we would want to define as clear roles, again, you cannot, for example, um, ignore your partner just because they've lost a job or they're not doing something. So you say those were your roles to play. And so I'm not, I'm not going to uh, do anything about it. I'm going to stick to what was my role to play. In the same manner, uh, if my wife has got to work and then we have nobody uh, to take care of the children, I may want to come in and just be there with the children, help with the homework and do certain things because we look at ourselves as a team. When you do that, uh, some of the issues that we have uh, will be dissolved and resolved yeah. as well. Yeah. Kendi, what is your response to that? Does, <laughs> does it change anything? It, it, I, what I completely agree with him is, yeah. it's the issue of what does security now mean to the woman? You see, previously security to the woman meant take care of me from uh, animals and burglaries. And, but you see, now she can afford her own KK security and loving some security. So what the, the new security for a big chunk of the woman is emotional security. Do I feel safe with you? Do you protect me from my in-laws, from the outlaws? Will I have to fight with other women concerning you? And um, you see, what the ego is to the man is what emotions are to the woman. The same way your ego is so sensitive, I just poke it and we have, uh, my house is on fire. <laughs> Our emotions are very, very sensitive. That is just the truth as a psychologist. Yeah. That's why the, 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 man who, the man who craves significance because he feels good when I, when, I, when I give him significance, isn't it? And you see, it works so well. When you cover me and protect me, I look up to you. So your needs are met and my needs are met. Okay. Okay? That's that is. Money was the... Provision, physical provision was what our parents knew. Emotions were irrelevant back then. But guess what? We are a very feely, feely generation. Yeah. We feel a lot of things, you know. Yeah. Even status is, what are you feeling today? <laughs> you know, our emojis are what? Yeah. Feelings, yeah. all right? So I think the challenge for the new man is, okay, what, the only thing I saw my dad provide was the meat, the fees, the what? The, these men never saw their fathers provide emotionally for the woman. So here they are with women who they have to provide emotionally for. And they so don't they're know like, how to. I, 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 I know mentally, technically what it is, but I've never seen it. So I think that's one of the dilemmas. All right, Rachel, what does security look like to you? Security to me, okay. <laughs> Judging from what I've seen from my dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was the provider, he still is, yes. Yeah. Security basically means I, I can conquer with candy because we're not living in the old times where the dad, the father role is just there. You want, you want fees? Ah, the school fees. You want something else? So I think security, it has to be emotional and physical. Yeah. Like for me, I'd like a husband that, yes, you're providing, I'm also providing. As Chris has said, we're working as a team. So we define the gender roles, but you know that you are supposed to show me that when I come to you, I can feel like you, you're like my safe space. Yeah. You see, you're like my safe space. Like I chose you as my husband. So when I come to you, I'll feel safe, not like from the thugs or anything, but 
you're there emotionally, you're there physically. Like when I'm with you, I'm like, ah, this is my husband. So I'm just, I'm just fine when I'm with you. So even, even if I'm out there, another guy starts showing me that I can provide more security than your husband. I'm like, no, I am very fine in my cultural safe space with my guy. All right. Yeah. Christine, what is your definition? You've been quiet on this one. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generally, I, I concur you, with all You have the microphone over there. Oh, yeah. Yes, I concur with all three, their mm -hmm. views on security. And uh, what I was thinking about as they were speaking yeah. was actually what we saw our fathers do. And our mom seemed content. The father just shows up. Uh, he provides, you need school fees, everything is provided for. But anything emotional about talking, maybe taking, taking my mom out that or, or talking nice, nice things, yeah. that we never got to see. But right now, that's what we are expecting. So as, uh, as, um, as Pasi has mentioned, I think it's time now they start embracing this new role now. I don't know if it's evolution or what it is, because the, 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 the needs and the expectations, they keep changing every day. So it's up now to the men mm -hmm. and even to the women to keep up for that, because of course even the men's needs are changing. So it's upon the women now to embrace and to perceive them and to find a way to cover what needs to be covered. And at the same time, the man now to realize these are women that we're having these days yeah. and these are the new needs that they need. And with the issues, you see, a long time ago, our parents, if a man starts courting you, like everything, everyone else, the entire family knew, the entire village knew, so no one would mess around, about, um, mess, mess around with that household. Yeah. They knew that girl is taken, and everyone will work towards protecting. But now, right now, there's a lot of competition. They say, if you're dating someone, it's not like you have a contract, you're still open, you're still out there in the field. So everyone is welcome to make their, their approaches. The their so it's upon everyone now, yeah. it's upon everyone, especially the men or, yeah. or even the women to up their game when you realize that this woman there's something that i'm not offering you have to find a way because if you're not offering probably there are people out there waiting doesn't that become undue pressure on either gender no it's not because you see as the woman is changing the man is also changing it's upon me now to observe and see the new needs yeah. um the men these days are becoming very emotional even them they as he was saying the ego <laughs> They, they also need a lot of emotional support <laughs> and you have to keep on um, on vilifying them and, and assuring them that you, you, you're really an awesome guy. So as he starts needing that, the other things I'll also start needing. And now it's upon both of us to realize what does my man need that yeah. I can offer and what do I need that my man can offer so that the people out there now... Um, they call them feces these days. Yeah. The feces out there, they don't have, they don't find any gap now to come in and ruin what you guys have worked at. All right. Mm -hmm. Carol, we've taken this conversation way above <laughs> your teenage <laughs> life, but uh, what I'd like you to tell us is how much of peer pressure plays into what you see, the interactions you have with your fellow teenagers, how much of that impacts mm -hmm. your outlook on life, mm -hmm. on relationships, on marriage, on all those things? Um, there's been, there's a lot of peer pressure out there. Yeah. Um, for teenagers, a lot of it, because most of the time, um, we seek to want whatever the other person has. Sometimes we, we, we can't even have it. So we, we, we fought line and we try to have it, which we, we can't have. It has really affected us because most of the time it lowers our esteem. Because when you're trying to be someone you're not, or trying to be someone else, you, it, it sometimes even leads to suicide. Because you try to find something you can't have, and you end up not having it, which, which leads to lowering your esteem. Yeah. Yes. So when you'll be speaking mm -hmm. to the teenagers during this women's conference, what will you tell them to look out for? And how do they deal with the pressure of social media? They see people happy and they want to be exactly like them. How do they be content with who they are and where they are without feeling the undue pressure? I think it's all about loving yourself and accepting what life has brought to you. This is saying that life isn't fair and you have to get used to it. If you can't have something and you can't have it, don't force it. Just be yourself and appreciate whatever you have. Okay. Because that's what God has like, given you at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rod, I'm seeing some gap here when we, come, when we talk about the conversations of the previous generation. Our, our parents, we never saw them mm -hmm. being emotionally connected. Mm -hmm. Now there's this generation that will definitely be parents. Mm -hmm. What do they need to tell their children? To rectify that gap that we have um, I think uh, what uh, we should tell our kids now because uh, it's our prayer that they will also get married mm 
that one they have to know this is my husband and the husband also has to be there for the family because as you can see nowadays um, mothers are bringing children without their fathers yeah. while the fathers are there they are busy so we can tell them when that time comes for them to get married they should work together as a team the husband and the wife and uh, doing that they will bring up a very strong family mm. and the children will also learn from them so uh, it's good to bring up role models yeah. to the family that has been a very controversial conversation because <laughs> when you talk about staying through thick and thin mm. how much pressure should someone take because then also there are people are saying that that statement in itself mm -hmm. puts undue pressure on either the wife or the husband to stay in a relationship that is not working. Okay, sometimes it's not easy because uh, when the abuse come, becomes so much, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, I think, uh, although the Bible says there is no divorce, yeah. nowadays things are happening, you are just getting scared. Do I continue staying in this marriage or what do I do? Yeah. The pastors are here to tell us. We hear people have been killed in a relationship, in a marriage. So not only in a marriage, even our young ones, yeah. we hear them because of this relationship. They are being killed. So there is so much for us we need to understand. Mm what to do okay. when such a time comes. All right. yeah. Re Reva, how do you balance that issue of parenting the parents? What do you tell them now? Um, what are the things they should look out for? <coughs> what direction should they have the conversation? Should you tell your child to be submissive? Which one? The son or the daughter? <laughs> <laughs> the conversation around parenting our parents yeah. is about um, majority of us right now. We are having aging parents. And um, we also have uh, um, aging parents who uh, a lot of times, for example, um, we have parents, our parents who have lost their spouses. Yeah. And therefore you find they are living in loneliness. Some of them financially constrained. Some of them um, with uh, non-communicable diseases and terminal illnesses. And a lot of us do not understand how to take care of our aging parents. And therefore, it's a conversation that, again, we need to, to, to have. Yeah. How do we support our aging parents? Okay. How do we stand for, with them? Okay. And again, in, in situation where they are also competing um, things around us. We are parenting our own children. Uh, we have jobs to uh, deal with. We have other challenges that are facing us. But yet we cannot afford to... Um, deny our parents the opportunity okay. to, you know, age gracefully. So that is one aspect, that is the one aging aspect. parents. Yes. But what about the parents that are here now? What do they tell their children? The parents who are here now, for me, the best thing that uh, should happen is to become role models mm -hmm. to our children. Mm -hmm. If they, I, I want my son to, to, you know, to have this model family. Can I model it? Mm. And I know it is possible to do it. Okay. So that... Um, this child grows seeing because a lot of times we are even telling our children you know do not smoke mm -hmm. do not you know uh, but you're doing it yourself you know yeah. but then that's what you are doing okay. and children especially when they are much younger they learn a lot by seeing mm -hmm. and even not even when they are much younger children even mm -hmm. right now I learn a lot from my mother, from my father, to see how, uh, uh, seeing how they, they, they handle their issues, yeah. how they handle conflict. So the best thing we can do right now is to support parents to become the role models. Okay. And again, we said uh, earlier that we do not deliberately provide parenting skills. And that's why even this Women of Honor Conference, yeah. that is one of the conversations that we will have All right. to provide skills so that parents can become the real role models to okay. their children. Chris, the issue yeah. of role models is a very big concern because can I be a role model to my child when I can easily tell them it didn't work out between mom and I? Because then they feel it's okay to work out of a relationship even though the circumstances may be different. How do you balance that so that they, are, they see the situation, they know what the situation is, but they're also guided in the right direction to deal with it? Well, uh, you know, I'll go back a bit into the conversation. Um, the ladies have talked a lot about who they have become now. Yeah. And um, 
and who the men are uh, saying you know women are more emotional and uh, they have a lot of the emotional need aspect the truth is their mothers did not even expect it our mothers didn't even expect the emotional um uh, provision yeah. from our fathers but the women have learned it they have learned to expect that and so in the same manner the men can learn to become the new version it's not always that if the parents didn't have it or they had it then i must become it certain things can be learned so even those of us who probably never saw our parents become the role model families you can learn and acquire the skills and all of you, you it will be a fight trevor it will be a fight if your father walked away that's the easiest thing for you to do you'll just feel like you know what it's not working let me leave yeah. but then you've got to remember how that affected you and whether you would want your son to grow up in the same way that you have grown up parenting comes with a sense of selflessness that you must stop thinking about yourself to a certain degree you must think about yourself a bit but to a certain degree you must think more about the people who are coming after you and then you begin to think what cost do you want to chat out for them how do you want them to grow up um there are men who are not having conversations for example with their sons uh, interesting that um the rev would say you know we need to teach our sons um, as mothers i think they do that but are the fathers doing that are the men having conversations with their sons because as long as we still have the mothers having conversations with the sons we're still going to have a problem somewhere there's there's a certain sense that only a man can instill in another man uh, a certain sense of self esteem and purpose and uh, identity that if the men are not coming in to get involved in the lives of their children we will still have certain things that will be missing out especially when you're dealing with the boys mm. right candy what do you what are your thoughts on this my thoughts are you know being a therapist every person that comes to my office comes with a field relationship we are such relational beings Trevor you have no idea everyone that comes is not because they've lost money somewhere or yeah. if they've lost money it is i was betrayed then i lost money mm. so we are such relational beings and because so much has changed with the industrial revolution all this they've destabilized what the family is um and and now we have the new age and technology and information age i i i still insist we have to put structure into our families let's introduce structure who is the head of this home what does it mean to be the head of this home what are your roles okay who is the second in command in this home what yeah. does it mean to be second in command who are the children what does it mean to be the children of this house that is important what sorry why because there are no structures there will be abuse yeah. there will be chaos imagine if today um the president decides i don't feel like being president let someone else there'll be chaos won't even leave this this place to to, to our next venue yeah. so structure is important who puts these structures in place i know is it a the structures within the family or do i just lay down the law this is it <laughs> yeah. society has always had structures yeah. all our faiths already already have structures yeah. this company you work for has structures but Imagine the dynamics there are no keep structures. changing in a family where the lady is the one who makes more money who gets to decide who's the leader there okay you see money is like he said one aspect of yeah. provision mm -hmm. it's not everything but it's one aspect what i've seen let me tell you i've learned the most from human beings not from the books i read yeah. what i've learned from women even if she's a provider she still needs a leader she still needs a man let me tell you sit one hapa tunajifanya 21st century women we still need men okay. we need men so bad you have no idea and we need men that we can depend on and rely on it doesn't matter how much we make what we cannot stand is a lazy man out of the question that one i don't and care how sweet of lazy uh, has let's, to come out. <laughs> we don't care how sweet and nice you are yeah. it's cute at the beginning oh my god he's so sweet he picks me from work you know so, but at some point you're like okay zuku mm. jalipwa i'm sorry we, we you don't have to make all the money in the world yeah. let me see effort the true girls the woman also see effort what am i supporting what am i praying for what are you building you know what's the vision what's the plan okay what am i following honestly i kid you not give me something to respect you for yes. give me something to admire you for mm. it doesn't have to be as big as mine i just need to see you're building something mm. Taking and let care me of tell our you, child wouldn't be effort enough if i said <laughs> just stay at home as you see, no um let me tell you the truth yeah 
in all of us, <laughs> there's a have a masculine and a feminine side. True or false? Mm. You know, I can show up and s- provide for my family, mm-hmm. but I'm operating outside my natural nature. My natural nature is oxytocin, my bonding hormone. I'm feminine. I want to share. I want to cuddle. I want to nurture. I can quit my job and raise my children for the next 10 years, and I would, it don't kill me. Can my husband do that? No. It's not natural for the man. He has t- testosterone. Testosterone is aggression, power, force, you know. And he needs that to provide and protect for me. Okay, not, not like this, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Our biology tells us we are different. Our yeah. makeup tells us we are different. Mm-hmm. His brain is bigger than my brain. Everything was designed to show us you will never be the same. You have equal rights, but not equal roles. Okay? Equal if, rights, if not equal roles. Not equal roles. Okay. Mm-hmm. God and Jesus are all God, but they had different roles. Mm-hmm. Jesus came and said, I'm here to do the Father's will. Mm-hmm. Imagine you said, no, I'm also here to, I'm also God, I'm also, <laughs> there'd be chaos, mm-hmm. all right? So, mm-hmm. man, woman, children, there has to be structure. Okay. Who does what? Who does, who has the, the ultimate, uh, the, 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 the back stops with the head of the house. It doesn't matter who makes what. The back stops okay. the head of the house. Okay. And as a woman who's under authority, I love it. Me, I love being a woman. I need a man. I am happy. I need a watchman to open the door for me. I need, I, it's working perfectly when I'm in my feminine role. You see the way they are smiling? Yeah. When I'm in my feminine role. And let me tell you, as a married woman, sometimes you despise the role of the man until you lose one. Okay. And there's a widow here to tell us. The day you lose that man, mm-hmm. widows will tell you, you literally feel naked. Isn't it? Like a covering yeah. has left you. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That covering, mm. not just provision, financial, mm. it is safety. It is who do I call? Mm. It is who will raise this child with me? Yeah. It is who will go for parents' day? Talk to a single mom. I talk to people, people for a living. Who cares about my child just like me? Just the man in my life. So structure protects both the woman and the man. Okay. He feels significant. I feel safe. Their children grow up in structure. It's yeah. fantastic. Okay. And uh, Chris, I'd like to bring, this is why I brought you in here, because now you're my backup for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the one being short. <laughs> what, what do you think? How do you now weigh that balance? Because it's the 21st century. There are many dynamics. People are busy. Some are more empowered than others. How do you lay down that structure? I think, again, I'll go back to uh, what I said, that at one, of the, one of the biggest challenges that we have with the men in our generation yeah. is who raised them. When Kenny talks about the feminine side, if a mother will raise the son, she will impart something into this boy. Yeah. And sometimes, then they tame the lion. They want this man to be as soft as possible, uh, be the gentleman and all. And sometimes, yeah. then they also take away the fight from the man. You, you mother the boy until he doesn't know how to fight for himself, how to fend for himself, mm-hmm. how to go out over there. Then he comes and he meets a wife who now expects him to be the man. And he's thinking, what does that even mean? So we need to bring in a sense of mentorship mm-hmm. um, to the men and to the boys. I know that there are certain programs that are doing that, but we really need to get into the place of mentorship for the men because a lot of them do not understand what it means to be the man. The expectations that Ken is talking about, some of them are not as obvious to the men. Mm. You know, he thinks, okay, I'm here. I'm here. What do you expect me to do? Other men are out there drinking and all, all that. I am here. I'm home. I'm never leaving. Um, I'm not relating with anybody else. I'm faithful. But he just sits there and he will watch TV, wait for you to do the shopping, come back. He will be sitting over there and he thinks, you know what? I'm here, at least you know I'm over here. <laughs> then you are saying you need to do something. I think the other thing that confuses men and the ladies need to understand that the first two to three years, you're taking care of this man fully. And then somewhere along the line, you switch into, I now need to be the woman in this relationship, do something. The guy is completely confused. He's thinking, but you are comfortable with me yeah. the way I am from the beginning. The expectations of the woman must be expressed right from the start as well we need to express the fact that we want to feel or, or rather they need to express the fact that they <laughs> they want to feel like the woman yeah. and not look like they're okay without a man because the moment we keep on pushing this thing like i'm okay even without you i can take care of myself and then the man gets into his comfort zone then you need him to become a man. He is absolutely confused. Um, men would process things very differently. Mm. The first impression you give him, he will go with that for a very long time. You show him you don't need him. That will stick in his head 
for probably the rest of the relationship. Yeah. So I think that women also need to bring out their expectations. Uh, they need to let the men know what they need from the men because most of those men don't know what they what the women need. Yeah. Uh, but there is a sense of mentorship that we must involve All right. uh, the men in. Yeah. I have to take a quick break here on Daybreak. There's a lot of feedback coming through. I'll read some of them right now in SMS 22422. We are talking about the challenges and opportunities in the 21st century for both men and women. There's a women's conference coming up. They'll tell us when. And then we are talking about singlehood when we come back next because there are those who are in charge. They are single. They are of the ripe age. And then there's a lot of judgment. Uli ananga wife, uli ananga buana. How do you handle that kind of situation? Let's see what you're saying on 22422 SMSs. And I have uh, Governor 254. It says to be a good father and mother requires that the parents defer many of their own needs and desires in favor of the needs of their children. As a consequence of this sacrifice, conscientious parents develop a nobility of character and learn to put into practice. He continues to say, practice parenting. Parenting is not giving your child everything they want. Parenting is not being your child's friend. Parenting is about preparing your child to be a useful and respectful person in the society. Do you agree? You, you don't have to be a friend. Okay, we'll talk about friendship and parenting in a bit. Shonko Andrew says it is a perfect market competition. This have led to a lot of pressure to young people as losing a partner is there also. How will they address the patriarchal equation with the growth of independence in women? Okay. Jacob says, what, what men can do, women can do. Philosophy haven't changed at all. Rural women is in inertia to her role as urban women been taken by social media and lifestyle of which has destroyed marriage and happiness. All right, let's see what you're saying on 22422. That's our SMS line. Just tell us your name and where you're texting from. And we'll read some of them during this broadcast on the challenges the men and women are facing in this country of ours. You don't leave a name of where you're texting from, but you say, I'm a woman facing a lot of challenges. I was once married and then got divorced. Having a child one year old, his father got married to another woman when the child was eight months old. His father is working class, working in the military. He continues to say, I went through a painful phase where the mother-in-law threatened me that I was there to just eat the money of her son, then told me to forget about marriage because his son has gotten another wife. Moving on is a struggle. Purity says, I'm 19 years old. I engaged myself into early sexuality and that's my worst regret. We broke up with the dude last month because I heard that he once slept with an infected person. I was immediately tested and became negative. I'm now scared to get it. All right. You don't leave a name or where you're texting from, but you say, kindly let the good ladies know that both the woman and the man have emotional needs and that the earlier man also attended to the woman emotionally, only that it was not done in the open as it is today. There were things that were confined to a specific place, like the bedroom. <laughs> Abel from Eldred says, women make our homes run by, they, by their mothers, sisters, wives, and aunties as well. Their challenges can simply be solved by giving them a level playing ground right from school, workplace, and marriage. We don't require iron ladies anymore. All right, keep your views coming on 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya Trevor Mbija. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We'll sample some of them at the end of this broadcast right after the break. When we come back, we talk about singlehood. <laughs> 